Welcome guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about the opiate toxicity. This is one of the common station of the scenario that you may see in the real uh, life or um, especially talking from your lab to examination point of view. This is very important. Now talking about opiate toxicity, before we talk about its management, it is important that we understand how to identify and what are the signs and symptoms of opiate toxicity. The common signs and symptoms of opiate toxicity are the agitation, change in the behavior, uh, cognitive impairment. The patient can become unconscious, drowsy, unconscious, or may become comatose. Apart from that, uh, there may be difficulty in breathing, reduced respiratory rate, and um, low oxygen saturation. These are all the common symptoms and the signs that you can see in any patient with the uh, opioid toxicity. The common reasons why these can happen are because of the drug overdose or can be because of underlying pathology, especially if the patient has any history of uh, renal impairment. It can happen in, um, in the patients. Now, before we talk about uh, how to manage, the approach towards those patients is very important. You need to follow the ABCDE protocol for this patient. Uh, in the Simmons scenario, if you go and see, start your assessment from A and carry on till you reach E. The important thing that you need to notice in such patients are their oxygen saturation, their respiratory rate, and uh, their pupil size. However, uh, it is important that you check all the parameters when you go along um, in the process of assessment, go and talk to the patient if the patient is not talking. Look, listen, feel if the patient is breathing, then you carry on your assessment, check the oxygen saturation of the patient, connect the patient to the monitor and uh, um, examine the chest, check the trachea, listen to the chest and do the percussion as well as auscultation appropriately. Make sure that you check the respiratory rate in this patient at this point and do not move forward until you know the oxygen saturation as well as the respiratory rate. Now, the most common thing that you may miss in such scenario is to check the pupils. If the patient's respiratory rate is low, you must check the pupils before you move to the circulation. This is called the dot connection technique and you are not jumping from B to D because you are just checking the pupil. It is to confirm your diagnosis and the patient should be treated as soon as you identify the problem. It is easy to uh, treat and very easy to identify. If you are in doubt, please treat the patient as if the patient has the opioid overdose. The common symptoms and the signs that you want to look for in any cement station or in any patient in your real life are the low oxygen saturation, low respiratory rate, and the pinpoint pupil. It can be one millimeter and uh, it can be pinpoint. So pinpoint and one millimeter are the alternative terms that can be used in your real exam. So make sure that you uh, you keep that in your mind. Give the patient a log zone. The normal dose for this is uh, 200 to 400 microgram and the dose can be repeated every three to four minutes until the maximum dose is four to three milligram. If the patient keeps going into uh, respiratory depression it is important that you call the ITU because the patient may need intubation and sedation and uh, respiratory support and the patient may need naloxone infusion so it is important whatever you identify whatever you're thinking in your mind you talk and verbalize and continue your assessment after you have started the treatment move towards C, check the capillary refill time, check the temperature, check all the peripheral pulses as well as the blood pressure of the patient and on the monitor check the patient's pulse rate, uh, heart rate and blood pressure and the ECG. These are the important things and make sure that you start the patient on fluids and um, 
do all the necessary investigations that include the UNEs, LFT, CRP, full blood count. If the patient has any signs of uh, sepsis, do the blood culture. There is no harm in doing that. Make sure that you check the temperature of the patient and uh, respond accordingly. If the patient has a hyperthermia or hypothermia, the patient may need um, IV antibiotics. These are the symptoms, uh, these are the signs of um, infection. And uh, infection is one of the reasons that can increase uh, the risk of the patient developing opiate toxicity. Now, after you have completed your circulation, the assessment of circulation, before you move to D, go and reassess, go back and reassess from A, and A to B, check the patient's oxygen saturation and make sure that the patient's oxygen saturation is improving, check the respiratory rate, and then you move to D. In D, essentially, you are going to assess the patient's consciousness by checking their um, alertness and the response to the voice, to the pain, and um, then if the patient is not responding, using the AVPU scale. Make sure that you check the pupils afterwards as well as check the glucose. And the other important thing that you want to check in this patient, any patient who has uh, signs and symptoms of opiate toxicity is their drug chart. There are several names of, uh, of the drugs containing morphine or that work similarly or the same uh, using the same mechanism of action. The common drugs that can be found on the drug chart are the fentanyl, um, alfentanyl, codeine, dihydrocodeine, and uh, buprenorphine. These are the common drugs and make sure that you check. If you find any of them, it means that the patient needs optimization of the drugs. Uh, stop any, uh, any of the ongoing medications. If the patient is receiving any medication that contains morphine, that should be stopped. And then before you move to E, reassess the patient again. So reassessment of the patient is extremely important and you may need to repeat the dose of uh, naloxone a few times before the patient becomes uh, well. If the patient does not improve, then uh, you need to call the ITU because the patient may need the intubation and sedation and support um, on the um, intensive therapy unit. Then you move to E, and expose the patient, look for any, um, any abnormality that includes uh, looking for any needle marks and uh, uh, any cellulitis, any redness, any line going into the patient or coming out of the patient, that is important in E. After that, you cover the patient and continue your reassessment, refer the patient to the appropriate specialty. If the patient is taking morphine or morphine containing substance for the pain, the patient should be referred to the pain team instead of uh, continuing the, the morphine containing uh, medications. If the patient has a sepsis, then you will need to treat the sepsis. Make sure that you check the patient's uh, urea and electrolyte um, electrolytes as well as the creatinine. The patients with the renal impairment are at high risk of developing um, opioid overdose. Uh, it is important that you continue the naloxone infusion if needed or uh, repeated doses of naloxone until the patient improves and recovers fully and also start the patient on uh, IV fluids for two reasons. One of them is that the, it will enhance the clearance of the medication through the urine as well as uh, the patients who are not alert, they do not drink, they are, uh, they are at risk of developing the dehydration. These are the common things that you need to consider when you are seeing any patient with the uh, uh, opioid overdose. So the key points that you need to keep in this in your mind in such scenarios is that as soon as you identify you find that the patient is agitated or drowsy or unconscious and they have the low respiratory rate check their pupils both pupils and 
treat them with naloxone as soon as possible you can give a therapeutic trial of naloxone as well even if you are in doubt there is no problem and the effect of naloxone is very transient and uh, the patients usually need more than one dose so do not be afraid because you are dealing with the life-threatening conditions so uh, it is important that you work very quickly keep your con seniors in the loop and discuss with them find out if they have any different advice now i'm going to show you just uh, an example scenario where you can find such uh, uh, such conditions uh, the opioid overdose uh, this is uh, one of the scenario where you can find out that the patient is uh, uh, unconscious and you are called by the nurse to see the patient. The patient has been admitted in the hospital for a few days, for a couple of days, and he had uh, he has a previous history of um, cancer. He underwent uh, surgery, and after that, he became all of a sudden he became unresponsive. So all those are the clues for you to think about that there is something that happened all of a sudden not a gradual thing so the common things that can happen suddenly that can lead to the drowsiness or the loss of consciousness are um, intracranial bleed or um, hypoglycemia or the drug overdose and the common drug overdose in patients who are uh, who are complaining of pain is the morphine codeine, dihydrocodeine, fentanyl, so fentanyl, so all those medications are important, keep them, keep those names in your mind and make sure that you check the drug chart of the patient and uh, you treat the patient accordingly, stop any medication that the patient is on. Following A, B, C, D, E protocol is very important, the investigations that you need for this patient because of uh, the risk of hypoxia or uh, and the risk of further complications, uh, the investigation that you want to do um, are arterial blood gas, so the ABG, chest x-ray, ECG, uh, routine investigations including uh, UNEs, LFT, CRP, full blood count. If the patient is showing any signs of uh, sepsis, do the blood culture as well as uh, monitor the urine input, uh, urine output as well as a fluid input. These are the important things in terms of uh, in treatment. The patient needs a naloxone and uh, the patient needs IV fluids for um, quick clearance of the medication as well as rehydration of the patient. That's all about uh, opioid toxicity. I hope that you learned. If you learned and you enjoyed, please uh, write your comments and like the video. Thank you.